of Trinity 6, Wednesday, when it's only the Lord and you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Psalm 23, verse 4a. Dear Redeemed, While this psalm verse describes the blessed doctrine for the faithful soul in this world throughout his life, namely, that the Lord is with his own dear disciple, its practical application is most certainly comforting in the hour of death. As promised by God, and as confessed and relied upon by the faithful, in the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord is with his own. We continue with the account of man's sin and God's promise in the life and death of John the Baptist. And she immediately came with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry. Yet because of the oath, and because of those who sat with him, he did not want to refuse her. And immediately the king sent an executioner, and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in prison, and brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. Mark 6, verses 25 through 28. A boisterous, rash vow. A vindictive, cruel request. The inability to go back on the stupid promise and lose face. The order is given. The order is carried out. The promise is kept. Herodias has her coveted prize. But lo, John is with the Lord, for the Lord is with John. What was true for John while in this world is true for every Christian. The Lord is with you as promised, and you may trust in, confess before men, and pray to the Redeemer of the world the comforting Christian dogma, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. That doctrine is true for every Christian. The application and practice will vary from one child of God to another. The executioner approached John. That may not be the means whereby you are going to depart this world and be with Jesus in paradise. It could be in a nursing home room, by means of a slowly consuming cancer, or in the emergency room with the futile hurried efforts of medical staff. You may depart this world by drowning or being burned. These ways and means are many. As you approach the end of your life in this world, you are already leaving behind all others, loved ones, as well as any who mean you any harm. Till death do you part applies not only to a beloved spouse, but also to wicked men, wretched diseases, accusing demons, and all pain and suffering. At the doorstep of eternity it is just the Lord and you, as you, dear soul, depart from your body and are with the Lord. Behold, you will await the reunion in the resurrection. Because Jesus died for all your sins and rose again, you will share in his resurrection. On that eternal Easter day, there will be a reunion of you, dear perfect soul, with your glorious body. It will be a reunion of you with all your dear loved ones who remain faithful unto Christ and were given the crown of life. Prayer Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. Grant this for me and for all my loved ones. May this gospel be proclaimed to the world. Amen. Hymn number 501, stanzas 1, 6, and 8. Why should sorrow ever grieve me? Christ is near, what can hear, ere of him deprive me? Who can rob me of my heaven? That God's Son, as my own, to my faith hath given. 
Though united world and devil, all their power can no more do than mock and cavil. Let derision now employ them. Christ e'en here will appear, and for all destroy them. Death can never kill us even, but relief from all grief to us then is given. It doth close life's mournful story, makes a way that we may pass to heavenly glory.